get the beaver fever. Hey everyone, this is James, aka Beaver Media, and I'll be bringing you my personal top 10 favorite Pokemon in honor of Geek Week. Number 10. Let's start this list off big with number 10. It's Waylord. Using this Pokemon in battle is probably not the greatest of ideas. Base stats aren't too great, and a strong grass or lightning attack could probably sweep this Pokemon. But look at it, there's just something about that happy little face that just stops me from hating this Pokemon. The Pokedex entry for this Pokemon is also astounding. I'm sure other people have covered this, but Waylord is made out of styrofoam people. And a Pokemon that's this big and weighs so little has to go on my top 10. Number 9 Archeops I gotta say, I wish I could include more Pokemon from later generations, but I grew up with generation 1 and 2, and when 3 came along, Pokemon just wasn't that popular anymore. But Archeops can be a hell of a great Pokemon. With a high base attack and high base speed, this Pokemon can usually sweep others in one turn. And maybe that's all it can do, especially with its ability Defeatist. What's Defeatist, you may ask? Probably one of the worst Pokemon abilities to date. If the Pokemon loses half of its HP, then its attack and special attack is halved. And as one of Archeops' best moves is in fact Head Smash, this leaves this Pokemon with a major disadvantage. Once you have used this move, you better hope that your opponent's team is wiped out. Now you're probably wondering why I've even put this Pokemon in my top 10. And actually, so am I. Number 8 Going back in time now, at number 8, it's Abra. Back to starting Generation 1. Now most Pokemon battles went like this. You attack, the Pokemon attacks back, you throw the Pokeball, but when it came to Abra, he wasn't having any of this, being one of the first Pokemon to actually run away from you. At the time, Psychic had no weakness at all. Now that's a pretty big advantage. The only downside to Abra is that teleport was all it could do. Needless to say, I never actually caught an Abra, one day, Abra. One day. Number 7. When it comes to this Pokemon, it seems the community is divided on the subject, with good reason to. And number 7, it's Steelix. In Generation 2, Gold or Silver, you picked up an item known as Metal Code. This item could transform Onix into Steelix, or Scyther, an already strong Pokemon, into Caesar. I think Onyx did deserve an upgrade, as a rock and ground type Pokemon, its stats were lacking compared to Golem and others at the time. Then I heard Onyx was getting an evolution. I could only think of the Diamond Onyx from the Pokemon episodes. But I have to admit, I kinda like Steelix design. Those evil red eyes and its grimace grin make it truly a terrifying Pokemon to look at. One thing that always confused me about Steelix was its signature attack. Iron Tail? Really? It's steel, right? Oh... Number 6 Heracross When I heard that Scyther was getting an evolution, I instinctively thought Pinsir would too. When I saw Heracross, I thought this must be it. But I was wrong. Though a Pinsir evolution would be cool, and maybe we'll get one with Pokemon X and Y coming out, just like Rhydon, Magmar, and others have done. Heracross is a pretty strong Pokemon on its own. I first came across this Pokemon in Pokemon Stadium 2 for the Nintendo 64. I had sent out Mewtwo, thinking this would be an easy match, only to have Heracross use Mega Horn and KO my Mewtwo in one. Heracross comes with its disadvantage, just like Scyther and Caesar, with a times 4 weakness to flying. But when there's a times 4 weakness, it usually means that Pokemon's incredibly strong. Right? Right? Anyway, just for that, this Pokemon had to be in my top 10. Number 5 Houndoom. When I first played through Gold, I never really bothered with Houndoom or Houndor. That was until I recently replayed Soul Silver and realized what a beast this Pokemon truly is. Its Pokedex entry quotes it as the Dark Pokemon. Yes, that's right, this Pokemon is dark, not just the type, dark itself. It even looks like something you'd see in Hell. Obviously, it must have been based on Cerberus, the Greek dog of mythology, which supposedly guarded the gates of Hell. And with this new generation of Pokemon coming out, is it possible that Pokedex Entry 666 will be a Houndoom evolution? Holy Number 4 Back to Dark Types, and it's Umbreon. Everyone has their favourite Eevee evolution, but mine has to be Umbreon. With the introduction to Night and Day into Generation 2, it had to be obvious that we were going to get an Eevee evolution with it, and Game Freak didn't disappoint. 
Umbreon had great defense and special defense stats, as well as the introduction to Mean Look, Curse, and Moonlight, it meant that Umbreon could be transformed into a one-man army. Once Umbreon had been sent out, you had better be sure you were packing a fighting type Pokemon. Number 3! Charizard. Do, do I need to do anything here? I, I really think he speaks for himself. Number 2! Oh yes, it's everyone's favorite starter, Squirtle. Well, personally my favorite. So much so, I even made a cartoon. I'm not doing my call, f*** that. Oh, come on. No, I'm not doing it. As your Pokemon adventure begins, you get one choice of Pokemon, and you better pray you pick the right one. If you pick the wrong one, the next two gym leaders are going to be hell. Oh, no. Squirtle, to me, will always be one of my favorite Pokemon, and probably my favorite starter. With only two weaknesses, grass and lightning types, he can already counter one of those with an ice move, such as Ice Beam or even Blizzard. I don't think I really need to say anything else. He speaks for himself. I learn moves quicker than you, you fat slob! Number one. My number one choice is, well, two actually. And yes, it might be known as cheating, but I have a good explanation. My number one goes to Magikarp and Gyarados. Originally, I was going to put just Gyarados, but you can't have one without the other. Like most people who played Generation 1, we all bought Magikarp under the false pretenses that it was going to be an amazing Pokemon. By level 15, when the Pokemon finally learned Tackle, we kinda knew it was a big lie. Some people may at this point boxed Magikarp, but for those who kept training, there would be a big surprise. Only a mere 5 levels later, this sham of a Pokemon involves into the atrocious Pokemon, with one of the biggest stat changes due to evolution. Training a Magikarp truly teaches you the lesson that if you put enough effort in, you reap the rewards. I believe that Gyarados is only great because of its counterpart Magikarp. If Magikarp was half decent, this evolution line wouldn't be too interesting. As new generations went on, Gyarados only got more badass, learning a variety of dragon moves and even other types of moves to make it truly a diverse Pokemon. So when you come up against one of these guys in battle, you really don't know what you're up against. Although every great Goliath isn't without weaknesses. Gyarados is both a water and flying type, which gives it a times 4 weakness to lightning. I guess the creators of Game Freak knew what kind of monster they had created, and without a big weakness, they knew it would be almost unstoppable. Most Pokemon with a high base stat had this times 4 weakness, and there's a fair reasoning behind it. All that aside, Gyarados will probably be my favorite Pokemon for a long time to come. That's about all for this video. These choices were only my personal opinion, and Nostalgia probably had a big choice to pick with these. If you like this video and want to see more, just leave a like.